my name is Melissa. This video is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the GoodNotes 6 app on your iPad. I'm also giving away a free monthly planner that you can have forever and use for this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. First is make sure that you have an iPad, an iPad pencil, and then download the GoodNotes 6 app on the App Store. Start by opening the app, then create a notebook by tapping the plus sign and tap notebook. You can then choose any of these papers that you like based on your preference, and you can even make your own free monthly planner with this template. On the top, you can choose a size, and you have the option to have it in landscape or portrait mode. There are three top paper colors you can choose from, but in here, you can also customize your own background colors and accent colors, and then tap apply to save it. If you tap on cover, you can also change the color and style of your cover. You can then name your notebook and tap create when you are done. Now here's the notebook that you just created and can start using. Another option is to import a template or PDF file on GoodNotes. To do that, you can simply go back and start over by tapping the plus sign, tap import and look for the PDF file or any compatible file that you want to import. If you don't have a file to import, feel free to use the free monthly planner provided in the description. Then tap open to see the file. Now that we have a file open, let's start learning on how to use it. First thing is that you can swipe left or right to turn pages. Selecting the pencil above will show the toolbar, and when you unselect it, it will hide the tools, turning your file back in navigation or view mode. On this mode, you can tap in the middle of the screen to put it on full screen mode, then you can tap the hyperlinks on this file. Now, to draw and write on this, you need to tap the screen to exit full screen mode and select the pencil above to bring out the toolbar again. Once you bring out the toolbar, you are no longer in navigation mode. This means that the hyperlinks won't work anymore when you tap them. Let's go ahead and start by using the first tool on the left, which is a pen tool. You can tap it again to use other pen styles, but the ball pen is the most commonly used pen, so we're just gonna stick with that. When you tap the pen, the thickness and color slot will show up on the right. First, you can choose the thickness of your pen. There will be three save thickness levels. If you tap it twice, you can adjust the thickness manually and tap out to automatically save it. Next to it is picking the color of your pen. You can go back and forth by choosing any color slot, but to manually choose a color, you're gonna have to tap on the color slot twice, make sure that you're on the custom tab, and then you can either tap the color grid to pick any color from this grid, you can also type in the color code if you have one ready, or you can also go back to the color wheel to find your desired color. Once you pick your color, add it to presets, and then you can tap out and start drawing or writing. Now, let's have a look at the highlighter tool. Same as the pen, you'll have the option on the right to choose the thickness, use the highlighter to highlight over your text or written word, then you can also pick a color that you desire. With the eraser tool, you can choose the thickness and start erasing your writing. If you tap the eraser tool again, you can turn on erase highlighter only, which will let you erase the highlights that you did and keep your writing underneath. Now, let's go and use the shape tool. Again, you can pick the thickness and the colors. With this, you can draw different shapes and hold it for a few seconds to perfect the shape. If you tap on the shape tool again, you can turn on fill color to add some shade inside each shape. The pen and highlighter tool a little bit works like the shape tool where you can draw a line and hold it for a few seconds to create a straight line. It is now time to type now. First, tap on the text tool, and on your right, you can first choose the font, the font size, the text alignment, and the color. You can also choose the color of your text box if you want it in a box just like this. Feel free to save this style as your default if you think that you'll be using the style a lot. You can now tap anywhere on the screen to start a new text box. You can choose to type with a keyboard, but I also like using my pen to write something down. So this is where I love to use the lasso tool. You can circle your text and change the size, change the color, and change its location. Same thing with the pen and highlighter. You can use the lasso tool to change its size, color, and location. You can also use the lasso tool to add your text or drawing as an element. 
This will automatically save it on your Elements tool so that you can use it like a sticker over and over. There are also a couple of other elements in there that you can play around with and feel free to use. Now to add a photo, let's go to the Image tool and pick any image that you would like to use. You can resize the photo the way you want it or tap it to do some other actions. You'll see that you can crop it the normal way and you can also crop it using the freehand. Then go ahead and resize it and place it anywhere you desire. These last two, I rarely use them, but let's see what they can do. The Zoom tool creates a zoom box to easily zoom in anywhere in your page and then you can write down on the zoomed in version. For me, I just prefer zooming in with my fingers like I do on the phone, but that's just a personal preference. And lastly, the laser pointer tool is useful for presentations. With this, you can point at any part of the page for everyone to visually see. You can even draw with a laser and it will go away in seconds. And that's all the basics that you would need to know. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope that this tutorial was helpful and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!